And so this morning, I just want to stop real quick. I don't know where you're at this morning in your journey, but I know where I'm at in my journey. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And give Him a hand praise like you're saved and on your way to heaven and God's forgiven you of all your sins and you're not ever turning back. Come on, get stand to your feet one time. Come on. I know we up and down a lot, but blessed be the name of the Lord. Yes, hallelujah. Amen. Man, I really believe with all my heart. I think a lot about pastors like Dr. W.A. Criswell. First Baptist Dallas, beautiful congregation, went on to be with the Lord. And his last sermon that he preached was, he said, pastors never die. And I thought about this morning, I've got a lot of things going through my mind this morning. I thought about George, he's not dead, he's alive. And where he's at is where we're going. So here's the deal, y'all ready? Be ready. Be ready. Sound the alarm. We don't have time to waste. We really, I really believe that the horn could sound any, any day, any time. And uh, I want to be ready. I am ready. I don't know about you. But I, I'm ready. And I, I like living. I'm not going to lie. I'm not one of these type of pastors get in front of you and say, well, I've got my luggage packed and I, I'm waiting for the horn. Because here's the deal. People are still lost, dying, going to hell. And so I like, I enjoy my salvation. I love living. And I love leading people to God. But that's all. That's about it. So if you're here today, you're not here by an accident. I want to thank God that you're here. And uh, uh, I'm going to continue part two on what I started last week. That uh, I am the one, this is the place, and now is the time. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, I am the one. This is the place. And now is the time. How many of y'all believe that? Now. Now is the time. Now is the time. We don't have to wait till next year to start growing God's church. Now is the time. I, I truly believe that everybody under my teaching today has the power through Jesus to change. That's where I differ with a lot of uh, preachers. They try to give you an excuse to live the way you want to live. Here's what I'm telling you. By the power of God and through His resurrection, you have the power to change. Donna, you got the power to change, don't you? You and Billy Ray are a testimony that you can change. So I really believe today what God is doing in this house and in my life and in your life, God has given us a now word. We as God's chosen people must stop, listen to me, we as God's people must stop discounting ourselves. Write it down. So many people are discounting themselves. So many people are they're, they're, they're counting themselves as lost. That there's no hope. There's, there's, there's nothing better for you. And here's what I'm starting to say in my life as of today and really as of probably about two years ago, that God is counting on me. And see, we hear that in our ears, but we don't do nothing with our anointing. Glenn, God is counting on you to be the man of your household. God is counting on you. Every day, God places somebody lost in your path for you to lead to Jesus Christ. I believe that. I believe that every day that Mr. God is counting on you to be not just the, 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 the God man, but he's asking you to be everything to all people. we got to do that for God. So listen to this. We have to quit saying that maybe so-and-so will get it. I'm going to preach here in just a minute, but I've got to lay a foundation for you. We've got to quit saying that, well, maybe God will use somebody else. Listen to me. You, you've got to quit saying, well, maybe God's going to anoint another church or another preacher or another marriage or another person. And you've got to start saying, no, 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 no. I am the one. This is the place. And now is the time. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. How many of y'all believe that? Man, you can do all things. Not just, not just some things. You can do all things. See, I don't know about you, but I need a now God. I wrote this down. I don't know about you guys, but I need my miracle now. I don't know about you, but I need my breakthrough now. I can't wait a year for God to fix my marriage. I need God to fix my marriage. I can't wait to be a better man when things work out in my life. I've got to be a better man. We can't wait to have another business meeting to vote if we're going to grow God's kingdom. We've got to grow God's kingdom. Woo! Hot dog in this house today. 
Praise the Lord. I'm, t- I'm telling you the truth. The, the bottom line with churches today, they don't think they're the one. We don't think that we're the one to make a difference. And God wants to make a difference in your life. I've got a very unique scripture I want to give you today. It's Numbers chapter 21. Numbers chapter 21. I am the one. This is the place. And now is the time. I am the one. This is the place. And now is the time. That's my theme. That's my theme. Numbers chapter 21. I'm going to start, Aaron, I'm going to go back up to verse 10. Because I really believe if I start in verse 16, I'm going to lose you guys. And I don't want to lose you. I want to preach and teach to you this morning. God's given me a, a word that I really believe for me and you in this church. Here's why I love Elkhorn, because I'm your pastor. Here's why I love El- Elkhorn, because God has placed me here for such a time. I don't know how long I'll be here. But as long as I am here, guess what? We will see the glory of God. We will feel His power. We will feel His presence. We will party like there ain't no party. Amen? I got 10 on board. Amen. Hallelujah. Even the babies are on board. Look at verse 10. Numbers chapter 21, verse 10. I'm going to read down to verse 20, and then we'll preach for a little bit, okay? The Israelites moved on and camped at Oboth. And they set out from Oboth and camped at, i.e., Abram. Listen to this. In the desert that faces Moab toward the sunrise. I love this. Verse 12. From there, they moved on and camped at Zered Valley, and they set out from there and camped along the side of Arnon. And there in the desert extended the Amorite territory, and Aron is the border of Moab. You say, Brian, I really don't care if Aron is the border of Moab. I don't really care. You better care. Every word in this Bible is there for a reason. It's for a purpose. And you better read the book because the book... He's good. <laughs> it's holy. Amen. Listen to this. So in other words, they had two camps that they went to. Everybody say they went to two camps so far. Okay, watch this. Verse 14. That is why the book of, of the wars of the Lord say, Waeb, Subna. These are some, I tell you. But anyway, I don't know how you can have Methuselah and all that stuff. And you got David right beside Methuselah. You know what I'm saying? But that's the way it is. Listen to these words, verse 16. From there they continued on to Beer. Not old Milwaukee. I said, I people say, I say, well, it was in the Bible. Beer is in the Bible. Wrong beer. Wrong beer. The well from where the Lord said to Moses, get, listen to this, gather the people together, gather the people together, and listen to this, I will give them water. Now you've got to realize God called them to the desert. That God called these people to the desert. Listen to this. Verse 17. Then Israel sang this song. We we preached about this before. Spring up, oh well. Spring up, oh well. Spring up, oh well. Y'all remember that? Yeah, for weeks. And he said, sing about it. So he gathered the people together. He said, here's where I'm going to give you water. I want you to stand here, and I want you to sing a song. Spring up, oh well, until water comes out. Are you kidding me? Yep. That's what God said. Listen to this. About the well, let's see, he says, sing about it. About the well that the princess dug and the nobles and the people sank. Uh-oh. And the nobles with the, the scepters and the, the staffs. Look at this, verse, verse 19. Well, then, then they went from the desert of Mathia and from Maya to Nathaniel and Nathaniel from ba- Bamoth and from Bamoth the valley of Moab at the top of Pisgah, like this, I know these are some words you're sitting there going, Brian, my gosh. But no, notice this. Moab, it overlooked the wasteland. I want you to underline that. It overlooked the wasteland. They were at a desert place, Dana. They were at a place that was dry. They were at a, at a place that God sent them, Glenn. It was dry. It was dead. And bad things were happening. How many of you know if the people die in the desert? If you stay there long enough, without any water, you will die. And God sent, listen to this, God's, had a, God's got a sense of humor. I think sometimes God will test you to make sure he can trust you. I think God will put Elkhorn through a testing to make sure he can trust Elkhorn. Before we go up and all live this journey together, he will test you to see who you are in Jesus Christ. So I wanted to give you this background, but I want you to notice something. It's important that you get this word today. 
God took Moses and God took the Levitical choir. And think about this. He took Moses and the Levitical choir and he took the priest to the desert. He took them to a dry place. He took them to a dead place. And what God gave me today was to tell you guys this, that Moses and the Levitical tribe and the priesthood, what they done, they started digging a well, but it wasn't where God told them to dig. So many people are trying to dig in a situation that God told you not to dig in. So many people are doing things. Watch me now. I'm going to have to square you up this morning. You're digging on somebody else's well. You're somewhere where you do not belong. And God sent me by this morning to tell you that there is a place, there is a right place, and you are the right one to dig the right well at that place. If you're trying to dig somebody else's well, it won't spring up. Woo! It won't spring up. You'll have a dead place in your life. You'll have a dry place in your life. But so many people, so many churches are trying to dig a well that God didn't say, that's the well I want you to dig. God told Moses in the Levitical choir and the priesthood, he says, I want you to go and I want you to dig at Moab. And here's what they done. Y'all ready? Say, what'd they do, Brian? I'm glad you asked. They started digging on somebody else's well. They dug and they dug and they dug. Spring up, oh well, spring up, oh well. And it was dry. They left that territory and they went to another place. And all of a sudden, Moses said, hey, Levitical choir, start singing again. Spring up, oh well, spring up, oh well. And they dug and they dug and they dug. And guess what? It was dry again. But at the third place, how many of you know what happens on the third day? Dead things come to life. Things that you put in the ground will eventually come to pass. And what God told me to tell me and to tell you this morning is this. Dig a good well at the right place at the right time and he'll bring living water to it. So listen to me. Listen to this. I got, this is a good word. So now you've got the third well that they were going to dig. Moses, for the third time, said, Leviticus choir, you come. So he had the choir come forward. And all of a sudden he said, preacher, I need a preacher in the house. I need a, pre a, a, a priest in the house. And he came forward. And God told him to do something crazy. He said, listen, you didn't take instruction. How many of you know that book is our, is our guideline? That book, if we, follow, just Elkhorn, if we follow this book, we will win. Amen. You will win in this marriage. If you follow this book, men of God, you will win in your marriage. The problem is we want to give our own rules and dig our own wells and have our own circumstances come out of that. Oh, no, it won't spring up. It won't spring up. God told him, he said, I want two people, to, I, want, I want two tribes to come with me. I, I, I want... I want the Levitical choir. Everybody say the Levitical choir. And the priest. Come on, I want y'all to talk to me, okay? So I want this word. It's got to get in your spirit. It's got to get in your spirit. God says, you Levitical choir, I want you to sing. Spring up, oh well. That's all, that was it. That was the only words they sung. And y'all say, I don't know why we sang holy, holy, holy all the time. Let me go ahead and tell you. Because he's holy, he's holy, and he's holy. If you can't sing holy, you won't live a holy life. Hallelujah. So man, God says, all I want you to sing is to spring up a well. And all of a sudden, he said, now preachers, I want you to get a staff. And I want you, while they're singing, I just want you to tap. Spring up a oh well, spring up a oh well. I'm not on rhythm, and I don't care. But that's what he said. Don't y'all think about this. See, we think God's crazy in the 21st century church. He was crazy back then too. He said, choir, start singing. Spring up a oh well. And while they're singing, I want the preachers to start tapping. And what God's tell, telling me, and with the word that God got deep down in my spirit, he said, he said, what in the world is happening here? I imagine people looking at him and saying, what are they singing? And know what J. Vernon McGee, Dr. McGee said these words in his commentary. He said, they stayed there for a day. A whole day. What if I told you, y'all want to see a, a, the rapture take place? What if I told you we was having church all day? Now, we got a few people that's crazy. But here's what most people would do. They would start digging in somebody else's well. 
Man, what's that preacher thinking? What if God told the choir to come forward, y'all start singing, spring up, oh well, spring up, oh well. And he said, every pastor, every priest come forward. And as they're singing, start tapping. Just tap. They had their staff and they would tap. And I don't know you're looking at me like I'm crazy. It's in the Bible. Read it. And I'm going to show you here in just a moment what God did. And it's so amazing. All of a sudden, they sung and they sung and they sung. And what God's speaking into my spirit right now, so many people walk away and they miss their blessing. Because God wants you to keep tapping, hallelujah. God wants you to keep worshiping. God wants you to keep reading His Word. God wants you to be faithful. Say, man, somebody say amen. amen. God wants you to be faithful to Him. If all you do is tap on Sunday, hey, you'll lose your well on Monday. We need some soul tapping going on. We need some good preaching going on. We need some tapping going on back in the house. Spring up, oh well, corn. Tap, tap, tap. Hallelujah, I preach myself happy this morning. Woo, I feel the Lord. I don't know what you feel, but the earth's moving. The ground's shaking. He's tapping this morning. Somebody give him praise in this house. I'm telling you the truth. It's not an emotion. It's real. God is still tapping today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All of a sudden, the, I love this part. I love this part. The choir came over where the, where the well was at. Oh, it was dry. It was in the desert. Remember, it was in the desert, Donna. It was hot. The pressure was there. The temperature was crazy. It was dry and dead. This reminds y'all of anything? And all of a sudden, he said, Levitical choir. Come. All the priests and all the pastors come. You sing spring up oh well, y'all start tapping. And here's what happened. All of a sudden spring up oh well and start tapping. Tapping. And all of a sudden the Bible says in Numbers chapter 21 that their staff went down and it didn't come back up. All of a sudden, Courtney, we got a situation. We got a dilemma. Spring up, oh well. And they started tapping that staff on the ground. And all of a sudden, the staff went down in the ground. Let me show you. I know some of you are looking and saying, where's it at? Where's it at? Let me just show you. Look. Verse 18. About the well that the princess dug. Look at this. And the nobles of the people, it's sent. Now, I know you may not read that in your Bible, but you go ahead and listen to me. You can't just hold your Bible in your hand and say, well, mine don't read like that. You've got to study. Study to show thyself approved. Rightly dividing the Word of God. Hallelujah. Separating the spirit from the soul. And I'll tell you, what's going to be left is what's standing for God. Hallelujah. So you just you got to read the Word. You've got to dig in the Word. Spring up, O oh Bible. Hallelujah. Spring up, O oh words. Bounce off that page at me. And all of a sudden, that staff, it stuck in the ground. Dr. McGee said these words. He said, he said these words. The great Jewish historian Josephus wrote these words in his commentary. He said, they had to get over and get two or three to pull it out. I think what happened, Jimmy, probably if I'd have been there, I'd probably got mad. Come on, you bunch of religious people. I'd have probably got upset. I'd got that staff. I spring up all the way. I started out good. I started out good, just tapping, 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 tapping. And boy, about that ninth hour, hang up on well, hang up on well. That's exactly what we do. When it's time to worship Him and praise Him, we don't get up and praise Him. God said, spring up. And the, the choir starts singing. The churches start tapping. And all of a sudden, we'll get in one accord like they did there. And living water came forward. Living water came forward. And I like this. They said in, in Josephus' thing, he said his words, he said, there was mud stuck on the bottom of it. There was mud. You said, Brian, I thought it was a desert. I, it is a desert. Brian, I thought it was dry, and I thought it was dead, and I didn't think things worked in dead places. My God does. Hallelujah. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but now I see. Hey, I once was a prodigal, but now I'm born again. Amen. How about you? How about you in this house? You was you once lost? Spring up, oh well. Was you once blind? Spring up, oh well. I've got a real thing, a living thing, a living water thing in me. You say, Brian, you sure are loud. You ain't seen nothing yet, baby. 
I can't, you just get the I can't help it. When something's alive in you, even when you want to act dead and go to dead places and look at dead things, my God will say, hey, 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 spring up, oh well. That living water will start rushing. Maybe this sermon's just for me. Maybe y'all are just too good. Maybe y'all's house is just perfect. Maybe you don't have no problems in your life. Maybe you never feel dead inside. Maybe you don't feel like your worship has become dry inside. I have. I sure have. It's so easy to con you and fake you out. Put a smile on your face and put a suit on your back. Carry a big King James translation Bible and I'll, I'll fake every one of you out. But see, God is worried about what's living on the inside of you. Hallelujah. God wants that well, that deep well. To, he wants to dip it down in there and come out living water in your life. I know I'm preaching. Hallelujah. Yeah, the bottom of the staff had mud and water on it. And I love what he did next. He said, y'all come. He said, this is the well. This is the place and this is the time. The choir came forward. The pastors come forward. And they started singing louder. And they started tapping harder. Elkhorn, y'all listen to me. It's not time to slow down. It's time to sing louder and tap harder. And ask for the presence of God to fall deeper in this place. It's not time to back off. Now's the time. Now's the time. I need him more today than ever before. If I go out, I'm going to go out with a bang. He would say all the time, say, Brian, you preach so hard one of these days, you're going to have a heart attack. I've had people tell me that. Watch this. Hallelujah! Is that good enough? Hallelujah! I can't think of a better way when I get to heaven, God say, Rafferty. He ain't going to say, Reverend Doctor. He ain't going to call me brother. He's going to say, Rafferty, what in the world? I said, Lord, I was preaching your name. I got happy in your name. I gave you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. I can't think of a better person to give praise to than my God, Jesus Christ. Amen. My Lord, my Savior, King Jesus. He's worth it all. I'll get loud. I'll sing. I'll dance. I'll shout. Woo! Glory to God. Praise his name. Woo. Hallelujah. You say, Brian, what are you doing? I'm tapping till the water comes. Oh, my God, I feel it in this house today. You say, Brian, what are you doing? I'm tapping till my breakthrough comes. Brian, what are you doing? I'm going to preach until the rapture takes place. Brian, what are you doing? Hey, I love the Lord in this house this morning. This means I agree, and this means shut up. But what's this? There ain't no shut up. Hallelujah. Tap, tap, tap. Turn your neighbor and say tap, tap. Y'all, you won't remember a lot of things, but Jimmy, tap, tap. I'm going to tap and keep tapping until I feel the presence of the Lord. Even when I don't feel like it, the heat is on, the pressure's on, it don't look good in my situation, tap. Are y'all okay? Tap, tap. Come on. Tap, tap. If y'all don't do it louder, we're going to tap dance in here in just a moment. Tap, tap. I want that to get in your spirit. Because here's the thing. The only way the water would have came, if the choir it should have kept singing, and the preacher should have kept praying and preaching. And here's what God just spoke into my heart. So what's it going to take for you to keep tapping in your life? What is it going to take when you feel dead in church? And some of you are sitting there like... There's, there's no joy in your life. There's no joy in your life. You have allowed the enemy... To walk into this church and into your life. And your smile turned down into a frown now. 
I'm telling you, my joy is in God. My joy is in my salvation. I can't shut up. I won't shut up. I won't back off. I've got the Lord. I'm going to stand in His presence. And I will turn my frown into a smile. Woo! Lord, we praise you. So what's it going to take? What's it going to take? We got to this point. Here they are. They went to the two wrong wells. And all of a sudden, they went to the right well. And all of a sudden, God called the Levitical choir over. He called the preachers over and the pastors and the priests. He said, you sing, you tap. Whew, golly, I feel this. Here's what happens. The Levitical choir brought the worship. The priest brought the word. <laughs> when you get worship and word together, ah, uh, Ah! When you get worship and word together, living water will spring up in your life. Amen? How many of y'all need some living water back in your life? How many of you need the joy of God back in your life? Watch this. Start singing. Start tapping. Start praising. Start preaching the word. And I promise you, y'all watch me. You say, Brian, you're crazy. You're crazy. Call me. Whatever. All I know is I am created to worship. <laughs> and faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. So when I get worship and Word together, you start singing and you start tapping, living water will come forward. Y'all got this Word? You really got this Word, youth group? Some of you, I've talked to you. Some of you look like a spiritual roller coaster. Hot today, cold the next. Here, I wrote this down in my notes. Watch this. I truly believe that Christians today are in a desert place. Listen to me. I'm almost done. Choir, you guys come. I really believe that Christians today, churches today, are in desert places. They're not hot, and they're not cold. They're lukewarm. And churches today and people today are making God sick. I know this is a tough word, but thus saith the Lord. God says either you're hot or you're cold. If you're lukewarm and you've got to have it your way, if you don't get it your way, you go, go work at Burger King. That's what they see. Burger King lied. You can't have it your way. Goodness gracious. And then when a pastor gets up to preach a word, here's what y'all will do. Here's what people will do. I was, at a, I was at a funeral about a month ago. And uh, there was about seven or eight pastors up there. And they asked the dangerous questions. Anybody got a word? And I was like, well, yeah, I've always got a word. But here's what started happening. One pastor tried to out-preach the other pastor. And the other pastor tried to be louder than the other pastor. And here's what God spoke to me. Sit down and be still. Sit down and be still. Because here's the bottom line. It's not about a popularity contest. Who can out-preach anybody? Who can outdance anybody in the Spirit? Who can speak more tongues in the Spirit? It's not about any of those things. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the gift. So we as God's people, and you as teenagers, and we as adults, we can't go back to no desert places. We can't go back to a hurt in our life and say, man, I've never come forward. Either you're hot or you're cold. You can't be lukewarm. Hot or cold, lukewarm. Hot or cold, lukewarm. Like we think it's an option. We think God's up for vote. I promise you, y'all listen to me. When we stand before the Lord, He's not going to say these words, what you think? I promise you, Eddie Finn, when you stand before the Lord, you alone, you and God, by yourself, 
Michelle, as much as you love her, she will not be with you. As much as you love your mama, she will not be with you to defend you. You, Eddie Finn, will have to look at God, and you, Eddie Finn, will have to tell God what you did with your salvation. You say, Brian, you're too hard. Hell is hot. Amen. <laughs> you think I'm loud? You wait, my God. Mm. If you don't have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and your last breath on earth will be your first breath in heaven or in hell, not because you're a pastor, not because you're a deacon, not because of nothing, because either you know Jesus or you do not know Jesus. Either he'll say, enter into your rest, that good and faithful servant, or he'll say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. You say, Brian, this is tough. I would much rather tell you truth in this house than have to stand before God one day and him say, Brian, how come you didn't preach all my Bible? So listen to me. I don't want to scare you. I can't scare you. I can't scare the hell out of you. And I can't scare heaven into you. That's between you and Jesus Christ. But I just think it's time for the churches to wake up. I just think it's time that the Bible gets preached from Genesis to Revelation and everything in between. I think it's time that the men of God who stands up behind a sacred desk will look people in their eye and say, Thus saith the Lord. Either today you're singing and you're worshiping and you're tapping into the Word of God or you're lukewarm in this house right now. And you know what you're doing? You're making God sick. You want to see God vomit? You say, Brian, God, don't vomit. You need to read Revelation chapter 3. He said, I will vomit you out of my mouth. So I guess the question is this. How long are you going to stay angry? How long are you going to stay miserable? How long are you going to live in the past and let somebody rob your joy? How long are you going to go to the well where there's water, but you say, it ain't here, it ain't here. God don't love me. God don't like me. I'm white. I'm black. I don't care. God is not about color. God's about heart. Right here. So no matter where you're at under my teaching today, I know this was tough. But I am the one. This is the place. And now is the time. If you're ever going to worship God, now is the time. If you're ever going to give Him praise, now is the time. If you're ever going to be sold out, now is the time. Don't you wait. Y'all listen to me. Hold on. Don't you wait till you're on your deathbed. Don't you chance that. Because if that Holy Ghost is not dealing with you, woo, listen to me. I believe in deathbed conversions. But if the Holy Spirit is not dealing with that person, they are not saved. A lot of people, even under my voice today, you wait till a tragedy, you wait till a problem, you wait till a sickness happens, and then you say, God, if you'll get me out of it, I'll praise you, I'll thank you. But sometimes, I see it all the time, you'll see people come in and God will heal them, and they'll go out and live like hell. I'm, listen to me. Don't do it. Don't chance that. If your heart is beating right now and you feel something like you've never felt before, that is the Holy Spirit dealing with you. Get out of your seat, come to this altar, and give your heart to Jesus Christ. If you're living in sin, here's what you need to do. You need to say, God, I'm going to worship you, and God, I'm going to praise you. Tap, 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 hallelujah. Come out. It's just time for some good old, good old preaching back in the house. It's just time to call black, black, and white, white, sin, sin, good, good, bad, bad. It's just time to say, God, you said it, I believe it, and that settles it. So I'm calling, listen to me. Where are you at today? Where are you at right now? Are you in a desert place? You can't even feel the Lord like you once did. Oh, my God. I, listen to me. Don't let your heart harden. Y'all listen to me. Do not let your heart harden. 
God said, I'll turn you over to a reprobate mind. God, in the name of Jesus, don't ever let my heart get hard. Whew. I feel, watch this. I fear the Lord, Matt. He's still God. He's going to win. He died for the world. And I believe the Bible. So today, are you living in a desert place? You're at the well. We're here today. We're at the well. But you just don't feel the Lord. Oh, you used to be on fire. You used to be rambunctious. You'd do anything for the Lord. Man, you would do anything for the Lord. They say, you want to drive that van? Yeah, where's the keys? Eh, well, will you clean the bathroom? Yeah, where's the mop? You'll do anything. But now, I know I'm preaching. Woo! Woo! I feel the Lord. Now, you're in a desert place. It's the pressure. Oh, this is good. Y'all know in the desert, you're, you lose your mind. The heat will start hitting your head, and man, you get delusional. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We got a bunch of delusional people. You've been in the desert for so long. That it's hot. The pressure's on you. It's dry. And you've been dead. Beware. Here's your next step. You're going to become delusional. Oh my God, I am preaching now. Woo! You're going to become delusional. You're going to start thinking things in your mind that is not true. You did not see it. You know no one said that. Here, here's, my, here's one of my favorite things people said at church. Well, they're talking about me. So what? Is this elementary, middle school, and high school? Grow up! Oh, that's good preaching. Woo! Hallelujah. Well, they're talking about me. Well, hallelujah. At least they're giving somebody else a break. <laughs> oh, I love you. You know why I love y'all? Y'all can take it. It's truth. Yes, they're talking about you. You know why? Because they're dead. Whew. They're dead. They're dead. They're dead inside. They come to a dry place in their life. And they're getting mad. Y'all, this time I'm preaching. They're mad now because they can't get their worship on. So what they're doing, they're sitting there and all they can do is talk. That's good preaching, Marcus. So, I'm done. Are you in a dead place today or a dry place today? A desert place today? Where are you at spiritually right now? If God were to come back right now, would He find you on fire? Would He find you cold? Or would He find you going through the motions? If you say, I'm cold, or, I'm dead, I'm dry, you need to get up here to this altar. Make your, make your seat an altar. Because I'm telling you the truth. How many of y'all got the word today? Come on. How many of y'all got the word today? It's tough, but it's a good word. They went to the wrong well. So many of you and me, watch this. I am you and you are me. We're in this together. How many of y'all ever had some dead moments in your life? Come on, bunch of chickens. How many of y'all have ever been so dry you can't even get your worship on? That's what I'm talking about. And if you're not careful, your next step, you're going to become delusional. You're going to start thinking and hearing things that are not true. And you're going to start acting on a lie and not, oh God, and not standing on the truth. Come on. You're going to hear things and you're going to believe a lie. And you're not going to stand on the truth. My God, I feel that in my spirit. Dead, dry, and delusional. My God, it's good right there, isn't it? Dead, dry, and delusional. You're hearing voices now. Beware, Houston. Beware. So my question is this. Dead, dry, and delusional. Not what you used to be. I'm going to ask you this morning to take a step and say, God, that's me. That's me. It's my marriage. That's my home. That's my relationship with you. God, I am dead, I am dry, and I am now hearing voices of the enemy. It's a good word. 
I'm delusional. I'm delusional. There's one man right there. There's two men right there. Thank God we got men standing up and go do something this morning. Well, Corey, it's all about you now. Come on, stand to your feet. Come on.